Let not your heart be troubled. You are listening to the Sean Hannity Radio Show Podcast. So like many of you, I have trouble sleeping. I have insomnia. No matter what I tried, it wouldn't work until I met Mike Lindell, and I got my very own my pillow. It has changed my life. What makes my pillow so different is my pillow's patented adjustable fill. In other words, you can adjust the patented fill to your exact individual needs so you get the support you need and want to help you get to sleep faster and stay asleep longer. Just go to MyPillow.com or call 1-800-919-6090. Remember, use the promo code Hannity. When you do, Mike Lindell will give you his best offer ever. Buy one pillow and get another one absolutely free. My pillow made in the USA, 10-year unconditional warranty, and it has a 60-day, no questions asked, money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose. So it's time for you to start getting the quality of sleep that you've been wanting and we need. Just go to MyPillow.com or call 800-919-6090, promo code Hannity. Take advantage of Mike's special two-for-one offer, MyPillow.com, promo code Hannity. All right, so how was uh, everybody's Thanksgiving? Mine was amazing, slept a lot. I did not overeat at all. I stuck to my diet, which I'm sure most of you can't say. I just made a decision this year that I'm not going to stuff my fat face anymore and did a lot of working out and uh, walking even outside, getting some fresh air. God lives. You know, the hills are alive with the sound of angels, and it just is what it is. I just needed the downtime, needed the rest period, needed the... I just disconnected in ways that you didn't hear a lot from me over the five days. I didn't hear a lot from anybody here. Um, it's amazing how viral my Butterball Master Built turkey frying went. I, mean, I love all these people that say, you know, oh, Hannity does his own turkey. I mean, it's like when I go to the store and people say, what are you doing here? I'm like, shopping? What are you doing here? And they can't believe well, somebody on TV actually actually shot I mean, don't you have people i don't know what the people are thinking but i like to shop myself and get the things i want and the things that i eat mostly nutrisystem at this point in my life and atkins meals um but my turkey came out amazing we put it up on twitter and and people just absolutely loved it um we're gonna spend a lot of time i could not believe the la times piece on Mueller and Mueller's failures and Mueller's history and his relationship with Weissman. Look, we've talked a lot about Weissman. I mean, here's a, a guy that was overturned 9-0. You know, he went after Arthur Anderson, the accounting firm. He went after Enron. He went after Merrill Lynch and uses the most unsavory, this uh, literally unethical conduct, in my opinion. Greg Jarrett will weigh in on that. Sidney Powell wrote a book about this. This is a frightening thing. When the powers of prosecutors are abused, and it goes into and dovetails into what I think and what Alan Dershowitz said, which is that, you know, with Paul Manafort's indictment that had nothing to do with Trump Russia, the whole thing is to say, Paul, you want to get out of jail free card? We'll give you one. Just tell us what we want to hear. And then they try to flip individuals and say, well, otherwise you're going to spend the rest of your life in jail. Hope you like bologna sandwiches. Not a promising prospect for anybody. And then I'm sure the same thing we, we saw happen over the holiday, you know, judging by Mueller's staffing choices, they don't seem very interested in real justice. And then, of course, watching what happened with General Flynn, how much you want to bet that General Flynn is signing a proffer and they're trying to get him to flip so he can save his son, who's been implicated in all this from jail. It's the tactics are an abuse of power at a very high degree. And it's what I've been saying from the get-go. The the reason that Mueller picked Weiss, Weissman, Andrew Weissman, is extremely telling. I mean, he got overturned by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in the Merrill Lynch case, and yet he put those people in jail for a year, people that were innocent. You know, nearly 100,000 jobs were lost for no reason with Anderson accounting. And in the Supreme Court decision... They said it was without merit, the prosecution, a 9-0 decision. That's Weissman's past. How does he get picked by Mueller in this special counsel investigation? And why do some Trump people tell me, no, we think he's trying to wrap this up. My ass, he's trying to wrap this up. He wants to wrap it up, you know, by putting handcuffs on Donald Trump if he can. And it's just so such an abuse, just like 
uh, surveillance, unmasking, and all these other techniques. But I digress. That's all coming up later in the program today. I want to talk about how important the next three and a half weeks are in terms of Washington. And I want to, I want to talk about it through the prism of, you know, this president, nobody in the media will tell you, has a, a great list of accomplishments. We have over 300 specific accomplishments. And I'm going to roll through it on TV tonight. If you want the complete updated list, we'll have it for you, 9 Eastern on Hannity on the Fox News Channel. You know, Reuters has a story out that just broke sales of U.S. single-family homes rose in October. It is now their highest level in 10 years amidst robust demand across the country. You know what's great about that? That means the American dream is coming true for more and more people. This is the forgotten men and women that I have been talking about and that I that, that Congress ought to be thinking about seems like we've got the biggest test now in the U.S. Senate. And the test, I think, is going to be a showdown. You know, what's going to prevail in the minds of Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins and Jeff Flake and Bob Corker and uh, John McCain, their hatred for the president or their love of the forgotten men and women of this country? Because on his own, the president has achieved a lot, a real lot. And if you look at the information, it's pretty staggering. So we got a 10-year high of home sales. Oh, yeah, maybe we'll forget the bell. I'll do that on TV tonight. But you look at the unemployment rate is now at the lowest it's been in 17 years. A million new jobs created. The Dow Jones Industrial, that's not my biggest measure because for most people the Dow Jones is meaningless. A lot of people don't don't benefit from an increase in the Dow Jones. I've never been a fan of the stock market. That's my own personal preference, you know, but you make your own financing decisions and long-term decisions because, you know what, to me it's a little bit of gambling. And when the next adjustment comes, you know, you're going to see 40% of your wealth on paper wiped away, and that's not a fun feeling. I've had it happen. So I'm not a big believer in it. Anyway, but it's up significantly, and it's up, you know, 29% since Election Day of last year. In election Day 2016, it was at 18,000. Now it's at 23, almost 24,000. So that's a serious, significant increase. And since November 8th, uh, you know, it's gained 22%. It's added about $5.6 trillion to the economy. I mean, there's a, that's serious money. Now, the good part is, as people cash out and take their profits with them, that means that's good for those people that have been left behind because that means, oh, they're going to they're gonna buy things, whatever it happens to be. They're going to go to restaurants. They're going to buy coats and, and furs and, I don't know, take vacations. And all of that keeps the rest of the economy going. The median existing home price for all housing types in October was up 8.7%. That's people's biggest investment. That's huge. Median existing home price is up 5.5% in October alone. That's a huge number. Consumer confidence is now up 13% since Trump took office, a 17-year high. Food stamp usage is now at a seven-year low in this country. And, you know, you just go through all the different economic measures, and they're pretty amazing. Here's the challenge. So far, the House this year has passed about 300 bills. The House of Representatives. The Senate hasn't even taken them up. Good bill, sanctuary cities. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Kate's Law. They passed the health care bill. They passed this tax cut bill. Now, none of these things are perfect or the way I want them, but at least they're getting the job done. And the Senate has done nothing. And all we've heard from Mitch McConnell and company is, well, uh, hey, it's a two-year period. Well, the, the, the people can't wait two years that are suffering. The idea is to get them immediate relief, which, to the president's credit, he's already done. You know, on his own, this president what kept his promise to keep put a, an originalist on the Supreme Court. The stock market's at an all-time high. Consumer confidence, 17-year high. A million jobs have been created. Mortgage applications now for new homes has risen to a seven-year high. Unemployment, I got it wrong, it's at a 16-year low in this country in just the last year. Then he did all these things, ending burdensome regulation. 
and has moved the country closer and closer towards energy independence. Energy is going to result in millions of high-paying career jobs for Americans. If we'd only stick to it forever, we would never need to import a single penny of, of oil from any country that hates us. Uh, he signed the Promoting Women in Entrepreneurship Act. He signed the, uh, the gutted all these Obama regulations. And let me tell you, that, that is a huge win for businesses because they're spending millions and hiring fewer people because of all these regulations and fines that they're paying for ridiculous things. He ended the war on coal. He weakened Dodd-Frank. He's promoting buying and hiring American. I've always believed that my whole life. If you can, if you can buy American and keep an American in a job, then do it. You know, he's investment from major businesses, Foxconn, Toyota, Carrier, Ford. All these companies stayed because he's putting pressure on them to stay single-handedly. Illegal immigration is down 70%. And he hasn't even built the border wall yet. He got the bids now. He's still fulfilling that promise for the border wall underway. You know, the president, as best he can, has fought back against sanctuary cities. He's created Victims of Immigration Crime Engagement Office. He's changed the rules of engagement against ISIS, and now we're winning. Oh, interesting concept. Let the generals, let the military do their job. You know, he worked hard to reduce the F-35 cost. He said, whoa, you guys are charging too much. And he got a more reasonable price through just, just negotiating, which we'd never done before. You know, he led the sanctions in Iran over their missile program. He responded to serious use of chemical weapons. If you were watching 60 Minutes last night and, you know, you got Assad now bombing 450 attacks against hospitals in Aleppo and and other places. Unbelievable. Then you got these doctors all risking their lives, those that didn't flee. He introduced the tax reform plan. He's renegotiating NAFTA. He got out of the TTP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. He removed the United States from the Paris Accords, thank God. He chartered a task force to reduce crime. The DOJ has done a great job at targeting MS-13. He's got executive orders promoting energy independence. That is massive. That one one executive order alone is going to mean, over time, millions of jobs for Americans and lower fuel prices, the the lifeblood of our economy. He signed an executive order to protect police officers and another order to target drug cartels. He signed the order for religious freedom, education. He's, he's now sending back to the states any way he can. He's in the process now of fixing the Department of Veterans Affairs, which has been an absolute disgusting mess. He got finally part of the Supreme Court up, upheld part of his travel ban executive order. He's authorized the construction of the Keystone Pipeline. He's created a commission on elect, election fraud and a commission on opiate, opioid addiction. He's combating human trafficking, rolled back Obama's weak Cuba policy. Food stamp use is the lowest in seven years. The White House payroll has been reduced significantly. He's donating his his presidential salary, and he signed 54 pieces of legislation. I have 300 examples of those. Where's Mitch McConnell? Do you know of the, the president? There have been House and Bill joint resolutions, 413. Only 64 passed by the Senate. Senate bills and joint resolutions. It's it's ridiculous. The president nominated 515 civilian nominations received by the Senate. In a year, they've only confirmed 266. Half are unconfirmed. And McConnell's lecturing us that our expectations are too high. Excessive expectations about how quickly things happen yeah, how in about, the democratic process. This is, good, this is it. This three and a half weeks will decide if Mitch McConnell, Jeff Flake, Bob Corker, John McCain, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, if they're going to literally cause, because they will be responsible, a a Republican beatdown in November of 2018. It's in their hands the next three and a half weeks, really, because they wait till after Christmas. I don't think anyone's going to have any patience for it.
Hey, there are only two words you need to remember while making your list and checking it twice this holiday season. Tommy John, the revolutionary men's underwear brand. They have redefined comfort for men everywhere, including me. Now, all Tommy John underwear is crafted with lightweight, breathable fabrics that move with you, never against you. Now, they're constantly thinking of new ways to help guys feel more comfortable, like their patented undershirts. They stay tucked in. They pull all the perspiration right off your body. The same with their socks. They're made with proprietary stay up technology and a whole lot more with over half a million men upgraded to a more comfortable life there's only one tommy john give the gift of life-changing comfort for the holidays to you or someone you love at tommyjohn.com slash hannity and right now you'll get an exclusive gift with your purchase of 150 dollars or more plus you get 20 percent off your first purchase that's a free gift plus 20 percent off it's at tommyjohn.com slash hannity that's tommyjohn.com slash hannity terms and conditions apply see site for details all right, we have some sound coming in. The president talking about, yeah, there will be changes to the Senate bill. Rand Paul has announced he will be voting for the tax reform bill. That's a big win for the prep. But Rand Paul has always been fighting for all of these things. And he's always right in saying the GOP never goes far enough. But I'll take 50% at this point is better than nothing. You know, the, this, this is a defining moment. If they can't get this done in the next three and a half weeks, they are putting every Republican, even the ones in the House, the House is, for better or for worse, the House has done their job in this sense. And the Freedom Caucus has played an an instrumental role in all of this, working with the leadership, the Tuesday group, the Saturday night drinking group, the blah, blah, blah group. But they played. They they did get health care across the line. It got rid of the mandate. Had a lot of good things in it, and it was a good start. The Senate couldn't do it. They couldn't even do a simple repeal. That was Rand Paul's vote. Rand Paul was right to demand and call for that vote. And then we learned what a hundred House Republicans, and in the case of the Senate, seven seven senators, Republican senators, who voted in 2015 for just a clean repeal, wouldn't do it this time. Now the question is. What is Corker going to do? What is Flake going to do? What is Ben Sass going to do? What is Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins and John McCain going to do? Because believe it or not, the future of the entire Republican Party in terms of 2018, if they want to hold off the public's anger, because this will be nothing but great news for the economy. Now, they have abandoned Reagan's supply side across the board tax cuts because they don't want to be labeled as tax cuts for the rich but what they're doing with repatriation energy the president acting alone on regulation corporate tax cuts middle class tax cuts is only going to be great for the economy i wish they just go step a big step further but that part they're afraid anyway the president weighed in on it we'll play it next i think the tax bill is going very well uh we had a meeting on it today Uh, It's going to be a tremendous tax cut, the biggest in the history of our country. You'll have to pay a lot less tax. That's okay. Uh, But we're going to have a tremendous, uh, I think we're going to have great receptivity. We've had great, great uh, spirit. And uh, I will tell you, the Republican senators were up. If we win, we'll get some Democratic senators joining us. If we don't win, they won't be joining us. You understand that. But if we win, I think we'll probably have a bipartisan bill, meaning a number of people are going to come over. But... I'm not so interested in that. We're really interested just in getting it passed. Again, it will be the biggest tax reduction in the history of our country. It'll bring jobs. It'll bring a lot of income coming into the country, buying product, etc. And I think it's doing very well. It's going to mostly benefit people looking for jobs more than anything else because we're giving great incentives. And we're going to be bringing back into this country probably in excess of $4 trillion, $4 trillion. That's outside of the country that right now, because of our tax laws, can't come back in. And we will be bringing back at least, I think the number will be substantially higher, but at least $4 trillion, which will immediately be put to work in this country. So I think the tax bill is doing very well, and I think the Republicans are going to be very proud of it. Thank you. All right, we can only hope so. 24 now till the top of the hour. That was the president moments ago. This is so fundamental. What have I been saying about Republicans? They've lost any sense of identity. Go back in the Obama years and remember those of us that were conservative 
And we'd all we'd say the same thing. We'd be like, you have the constitutional power, the enumerated power of the purse. In other words, they could have taken a tough stand and they could have defunded Obamacare. And there were a few. Ted Cruz led the way in the Senate at that particular moment in time. And Ted Cruz was saying, hey, you know, we can de- we can use our authority. We can get this done. And they never got it done. And and this is what's so frustrating to people like me as a conservative. I'm saying, wow, how, how do you not use your enumerated powers? But there was a fear, a genuine fear among Republicans that they would be blamed if, in fact, something happened and... You know, and they, in other words, that they'd be blamed for the government shutdown. And that was a weapon that Obama used on them. Now, they were out of power. They didn't want to, you know, they just didn't want to ever use it. The same thing that is really happening, the, the tax bill is not perfect either. But are the president's right about repatriation. $4 trillion is a lot of stimulant to the economy. And it should be ongoing. It should be, we should be a tax haven for every corporation. Well, Hannity is sticking up for big corporations. Well, what is a corporation? A corporation produces goods and services that people want, need, and desire. And if people want, need, and desire them, although they're going to spend money to get those services, get those goods. So I don't like the pejorative because it's really a it's really an attack on on capitalism itself by the left. And, well, they're out for profits. Well, okay, what's wrong with a profit? They sell something to you that you want. They sell a service you need, that you desire. You're willing to pay for it. And, wow, the people that produce whatever goods they are or provide the services, whatever they happen to be, well, those are people that then have jobs. Those are people that can be successful. And it's it's just good overall. Well, $4 trillion is a lot. That is a real lot. So Rand Paul has now said uh, that he w- has confirmed that he will be voting yes on the GOP tax plan when the Senate votes on it later this week. That's a big win for the president. And as I've been saying, he, he's going to vote yes, even though the tax overhaul, as he says, isn't perfect, and he'd like to see a larger cut. I agree with him wholeheartedly. He's 100% right. But if we don't get something done, then we're never going to stimulate the economy. You know, we've gotten a lot done just by the president acting on his own. I was talking to one of probably the most successful business people in the country over the weekend. I just happened to talk to him on other matters. And he's a fan of the president. And he's like, it's so frustrating to me. And I don't remember the president... I think he was involved in the Time Magazine thing. By the way, I call BS on Time Magazine. Time Magazine, I guarantee you, did call the White House. They did ask for an interview. They did imply he was being considered for Man of the Year. But they wouldn't promise it to him. And he said, well, I don't care. If I'm not getting it, why should I give you a photo shoot? And why should I give you an interview? Which is typical Trump. And I think it's hilarious. But Republicans can't stand it. One of the things I've been telling as I talk to people over these, this five-day holiday that we had, I have not changed who I am over the years. I just haven't. I still believe in the penny plan, for example, to balance the budget. I think we've got to rein in government spending. That's not even being considered yet. But first things first, you got GDP growth to 4 4.5%. 4.5%. We're golden. Then you can grow your way out of deficits. You can grow your way to balance budgets. And the best thing is what the president first did was ending the burdensome Obama year regulations. Those things are huge. Energy is such a big component. It's always understated. Millions of high-paying jobs now that America is committing itself towards energy independence. And by energy independence, I mean all of the above. You know, allowing coal to continue in this country. Um, Opening up drilling in the 48 states and in Anwar. uh, Natural gas production. We don't need to import one bit of energy, we are, we can be energy self-sufficient for hundreds of years. And I'm not against simultaneously developing newer technologies that will wean us off of fossil fuels forever. What do I care? You know, as long as it happens in a way that 
those people can transfer their job skills from one industry to another. Energy is the lifeblood of our economy. I'm sure in 100 years there's going to be alternative sources of energy that actually work. You know, not government-funded boondoggles like, like Solyndra and kickbacks for cronies, which has been happening. But all of this is now leading to great economic statistics. And all of this is almost done single-handedly by the president. You know, the president going out there independently and fighting to bring jobs back to America. You know, for example, you know, according to the Wall Street Journal, representatives of the German chemical giant Bayer, you know, they're on the stock exchange. They met with the president. And their representatives announced that they're purchasing Monsanto. And they're committed to keeping Monsanto's 9,000 U.S. jobs in the country and adding 3,000 other new high-tech jobs for Americans. If you work in the high-tech industry and you're out of work, that's good news for you. And Bayer said it will direct a, a half of a, a planned $16 billion in agricultural research spending in the next six years. you got ten companies that are bringing jobs back to America. One of them is Amazon announcing that they're going to embark on an ambitious hiring spree. And according to Amazon, they want to create 100,000 new jobs for American workers over the next 18 months. I'm not exactly the biggest fan of Amazon, but good, good for them. Let's get Americans back to work. You got Ford Motor Company is planning to build a $1.6 billion factory. They had that plan for Mexico. Instead, after pressure from the president and others, the company announced that they're canceling the Mexican car factory, adding that it would invest $700 million to expand their Flat Rock, Michigan factory. And that money is going to go towards manufacturing high-tech electric, hybrid, and other cars and adding hundreds of U.S. jobs. And the president singled out that new Mexican plant for criticism prior to the election. Now, that Ford wouldn't admit that that's the reason they changed their mind, but I'm sure it had something to do with it. IBM has spent years transitioning their business away from PCs into IT services. And anyway, they jettisoned thousands of U.S. workers in favor of hiring support staff based in countries such as India, where labor's cheap. But in May of last year, they the company announced another round of layoffs. By the end of the year, IBM's strategy had changed in a dramatic fashion. The CEO announced the company wants to invest now a billion dollars in the U.S. over the next number of years. Walmart, same story. Sprint, same story. Lockheed Martin, same story. Hyundai, same story. You know, they're going to boost spending in the U.S. 50% over planned levels. You know, spending $3.1 billion over the next five years. Well, why would we be importing cars when we can build them here in America? It doesn't have to be Ford or Chrysler or GM. It could be these other companies, but use American workers, and I'd be... And then at that point, I'll, I don't mind buying it, although I buy the same car every time. I should, I'm full of crap. Uh, not really. I'm just saying I, I keep getting the same car. Carrier air conditioners is another one. You know, you got, you know, since the election, you've got Ford, you've got Dow Chemical. And I'm just giving you some of the success stories. You know, the president of the United States, with the power of that pulpit, has an awful lot of power. Translux is another one. Sprint is another one. General Motors is another one. They produce, General Motors produces vehicles in 30 countries. Their history began here in America. Just after Trump won the election, the company issued a congratulatory press release affirming their commitment to support the U.S. manufacturing business. The following day, GM announced a $900 million investment to upgrade facilities in Ohio and Michigan and Indiana for future product programs. I always buy a GM. My next air conditioner is going to be Carrier because of their commitment now to bring those jobs. You know, they were going to move 1,400 jobs out of Annapolis to Mexico. I'm sure at some point in the next year or two, some air conditioner somewhere is going to break. I'm going to buy a Carrier air conditioner. And any of these companies, I'll go out of my way to buy their, their products as long as it's going to help American workers. You know, the president's not getting a whole lot of help from, from the U.S. Senate, and that's the problem. Half of his appointments haven't been even considered. Civilian appointments, this they have to be confirmed by the Senate. They've only confirmed half of them. 50% have not even been brought up yet. And we get lectures from Mitch McConnell. It's 
pathetic. That's why, you know, I'm skeptical whether or not we're going to get this done in terms of this tax reform bill. And guys like Rand Paul, if Rand Paul under normal conditions probably would have fought a lot harder. And the reason he's doing it is because he's trying to move the ball up the field and get a first down and maybe even get a field goal at least. You know, the House has been busy. House passed 300 bills in the last year that the Senate hasn't even begun taking up. There's no excuse for that in the United States Senate. I know it's the more deliberative body. It doesn't mean crap to me. I got 300 specific Donald Trump accomplishments on his own. Where do you see what we have planned for tonight on Hannity, on the Fox News Channel? And now all eyes are on the U.S. Senate, on Mitch McConnell. All eyes are on John McCain. John McCain and Bob Corker, Ben Sass, the ass, and uh, Jeff Flake, the snowflake. Now, these guys, well, they're leaving. Or in the case of Corker and in the case of Flake, do they care at all what happens to their colleagues next November? Because they've got to know that there's a lot riding on them getting this done. Because if this gets done, and if that money, corporate tax cut money, if that energy money, if that middle class tax cut kicks in, if the repatriation money comes back as quickly as I think a lot of it will, and factories and manufacturing centers are built, well, then the economy is going to soar. You know, you could predict with pinpoint accuracy everything Obama did was going to tank the economy. And he's the first president ever to have 3% GDP growth of the year. He doubled our debt. 13 million more Americans on food stamps. 8 million more in poverty. Worst recovery since the 40s. Lowest labor participation rate since the 70s. I'm predicting just the opposite is going to happen if you do the opposite things. Do the things that work with Reagan. That's why I think it's somewhat timid that they won't go a little further. But I guess politically, dealing with a weak Republican Party, one lacking in identity, one not wanting to have bold pastels and uh, bold colored differences, but pale pastels. And, uh, you know, I'll take what I can get at this point because I know everything that they're talking about is good. Anyway, 800-941-SEAN is our toll-free telephone number if you want to be a part of the program. We're going to investigate the investigators when we come back. News and information you won't get anywhere else about Robert Mueller and about Andrew Weissman. Their backgrounds are atrocious. Their ethics are atrocious. And nobody's even talking about it. All right, as we roll along, investigating the investigators, the records and backgrounds, the more we dig deeper into Mueller and Andrew Weissman, they're atrocious. Their tactics unethical. Their failure rate spectacular. And then the question you have to ask yourself is, what is their real motivation here? What is their real goal here? Is it truth? Is it justice? Or is it a fishing expedition where their real goal is just to take out the president any way they can, a duly elected president? we got Greg Jarrett coming up. Also, Sidney Powell wrote an amazing book, License to Lie, Exposing Corruption in the Department of Justice and the Justice System in America. Also, Lou Dobbs today. You said Bob Mueller's a zealot. He is. And you were emphatic about he it. He is. I had experiences a, with him. A, a, a ze- what kind of experience? Well, uh, I had a case, and my colleague, Harvey Civilglade, and I went to see him in Washington, and we started to talk about prosecutorial and misconduct and misconduct by the FBI, and he cut us off. And he said, it's a non-starter to talk to me about FBI misconduct or prosecutorial misconduct. It's a non-starter. He doesn't want to hear about that. He is in the business of protecting the FBI, protecting prosecutors, prosecutors at all costs. I don't suggest he's unethical, but he's very zealous, and he uses a tactic that's very questionable. I I would argue, then, that's probably what makes him good at his job. Is Is that wrong? It makes him effective at his job, but the job of a prosecutor is to do justice, not to get as many notches on his belt as possible, and I think this tactic... You believe that's what he's... Well, I think he's... Look, he is the special counsel. He has an enormous budget. He has a man with his target on his back, the president of the United States. He's not going to be satisfied until he gets to the president or people very close to him. That's the danger of a special prosecutor. Manafort knows where the bodies are buried. He was an intimate. And if anything happens...
have been wrong in the campaign, and there's no evidence that anything did, Manafort would know about it. Even if he wasn't directly there, he'd heard about it. Sure. And so this is an important event for Mueller to try to get leverage over this intimate. You know, the first rule in American crime is if you're going to commit a crime, commit it with somebody more important than you are. <laughs> so you can turn them in. They can't turn you in. Right. And that's what's going to happen. Now, you know, there may be a deal in the works. He may be trying to make a deal with the prosecution. He may be dangling the information so that he wants Trump to pardon him. I don't think Trump's going to pardon him. I think politically that would be could, of course. Politically, that would be difficult. Legally, constitutionally, there'd be no problem in doing it. But Manafort now is the first domino. And what Mueller wants to do is see him as the first domino, the second domino, the third domino, ultimately trying to get to the big domino that is President what if Manaf- Trump. All right, believe it or not, that was Alan Dershowitz, our hour two Sean Hannity show. Uh, glad you're with us. 800-941-SEAN if you want to be a part of the program. This is exactly the types of things we have been talking about. And now you've got the L.A. Times coming out with a big piece about the record, the background of people like Bob Mueller and Weissman, who is uh, their track records are just atrocious. Their tactics are questionable. Their ethics are, frankly, uh, not beyond reproach. They have example after example of unethical co- uh, conduct. Now, in the political sphere, I'm sure the Democrats don't care as long as, as long as they get what they want. Their goal is not Paul Manafort, never was. Their goal is not Michael Flynn, General Flynn, and his lawyer. The fact that they met with the special counsel's team, you know, seems like we're on the verge of a proffer if, if it's not already been signed, and some type of plea deal is going to be made in his particular case. Uh, leveraging going after Michael or General Flynn's son, I'm sure, came up as part of the discussions also. Greg Jarrett is here to break all of this down. Um, Let's start with Dershowitz's comments, because, look, Alan Dershowitz has been dead on accurate from the get-go. These tactics that he's describing are used every day. They are by overzealous prosecutors who are so unprincipled they would do anything, including suborning perjury, in order to obtain a conviction in their one-loss column. And that's what I worry about here. I suspect that Flynn has nothing to say about so-called collusion between the Trump administration or Donald Trump himself and the Russians. Uh, But uh, that may not matter if he's willing to, at the behest and under pressure uh, of the special counsel, Robert Mueller, to lie. And, you know, we have seen it time and time again in which, you know, under threat of uh, prosecuting your own son uh, or threat of putting you behind bars, you succumb to the pressure of exaggerating or of outright lying about events, uh, being encouraged by a prosecutor. In other words, so it, let, let's go over the case of Paul Manafort. What they charge Manafort with has nothing to do with Russia. In, in other words, the initial right. reason for the investigation. It's and, tax fraud. Okay, going back to issues involving the Ukraine, nothing right. to do with Russia. Correct. There's nothing that we hear at all that General Flynn has to do with Russia. Right. Uh, it appears to be he failed to file as a foreign agent. He may have... By the way, uh, how many people have been prosecuted under that law in yeah, 60 years? Yeah. A handful and most of the prosecutions six. were never successful. Five out of the six were not successful. That's right. So, and, and generally the government has the attitude of you can file late, file an amended one, and you're okay, you haven't violated the law. For the first time we're seeing, really in years, Robert Mueller taking a different view and actually charging uh, Paul Manafort with failing uh, to file properly. Now he is probably doing the same thing with Flynn and some other things, which may have included not telling the truth during your national security clearance interview, maybe not telling the truth with the FBI agents who interviewed him about his conversations with the Russian ambassador. But those have nothing whatsoever to do with Col- Let's talk about the lead prosecutor on the case as it relates to Manafort, this guy Weissman. What is his background? Uh, He has the great distinction of having, uh, in the Enron case, the Anderson accounting case, oh, millions or tens of thousands of people lost their job, rather, and more importantly, a Supreme Court that ruled 9-0 against him. That doesn't right. happen very often. No, and as a consequence, Andrew Weissman uh, was forced to resign in disgrace. So why would why would Mueller then choose somebody like that with that background? Because he is a zealous prosecutor who, in my opinion, is overzealous and unprincipled. He ruined people's lives. Think about what he did in the Arthur Anderson case. He put tens of thousands of people out of work for nothing. The Supreme Court 
court said it, it was a case without merit, nine to nothing. Then he went on Weissman, and he ruined the lives of people at Merrill Lynch in the Enron case, putting them behind bars, only to have that overturned by the Fifth Circuit. This is a man, Weissman, who is known as a legal thug, who will use any tactic, legal or otherwise, to bring somebody down. So this is this is now what Team Trump is facing. Right. Now, I've interviewed people that are around the president, and they seem to think that Mueller, no, he wants to wrap this up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm yeah, sitting I've heard there the saying, same thing, yeah. and I don't believe it. I don't believe, I think he is, as Dershowitz points out, he is now trying to leverage and pressure Manafort, Flynn, and who knows, is it going to be Jared Kushner next? Yeah. Uh, nothing to do with Trump-Russia collusion, all in an effort to say, you want to get out of the trouble we now have you in? Give us information. Right. Which then could lend itself for people making things up, or they create a, a perjury trap for people. Look, look at the um, the case of, of Fitz- Scooter Libby. Scooter Libby and Patrick Fitzgerald. Right. Three years, and all they came up with is a, well, he, Scooter Libby was being pressured to bring down the vice president at the time, Dick Cheney. Right. He wouldn't do it. Right. And he got charged. Right. For what? And, For and perjury. It, it was a pretty flimsy case. Right. Uh, but, you know, this is what happens when you appoint a special counsel. They generally never solve the issue that uh, was underlying their appointment. Instead, they go after collateral matters. And, you know, in the end, they accomplish very little. Okay, in the end, what did they get Scooter Libby for? Lying? Yeah. Perjury trap? Right. If you don't remember everything perfectly and you, you're you answering questions, you get caught up in a, and a it, seemingly contradictive way, which might might be innocent. And it had nothing it doesn't matter. to do with who leaked the name of Valerie Plame. Well, but that was the cause of the ori- original right. special counsel right. appointment. But we know Patrick Fitzgerald knew on day one. Right. It was Richard Armitage who did it. Everybody wants a special counsel until you get one and you see see the results and the money spent for very little. Let me read from the L.A. Times. Mueller's record shows a man of fallible judgment who can be slow to alter his chosen course. At times, he has intimidated or provoked resentment among subordinates, and his tendencies, yet linear uh, approach to evaluating evidence, led, led him to fumble the biggest terrorism investigation since 9-11. Now, as the lead sprawling investigation aimed at the White House, Mueller's prosecutorial discretion looms over the Trump presidency. On what terms would Mueller offer immunity from prosecution to investigate targets? How broadly will he interpret his mandate to probe not only the 2016 campaign, but also matters, quote, that may rise directly from the investigation, which we now know is where his investigation has led, far from the original mandate of the investigation. Somebody sent me the L.A. Times. I I confess I haven't read it, but I I probably know what it says. And I've written about this, that the two people who completely bungled the anthrax case, in which people die, they falsely accused somebody of sending the anthrax in the end, they had it wrong, and those two people were Robert Mueller and James Comey. Uh, and as a consequence, five million dollars in taxpayer money was paid to the man who was falsely accused by Mueller and Comey. That's all that true. just it's shows in the piece. you. Is it in the piece? Yeah. yeah, I figured. But but there's also a '79 case. The government went against the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club. Thirty-three members. Indictments allege bombings and murders, as well as the manufacture and sale of illegal drugs. The defendants and their supporters were so feared they had bulletproof glass that was installed in court to shield the judge. And anyway, the first trial of 18 defendants ended only with five convictions, and all were overturned on appeal. Again, yeah. just like Weissman. Yeah, and this has been the record of James Comey, uh, who also was a U.S. attorney, and, uh, and Robert Mueller. Um, because these are guys who are so blind to justice, as Dershowitz was pointing out. That's their job, to seek truth and justice. And there has to be a semblance of fairness in the process. But when you get overzealous prosecutors like Mueller and, and Comey, all of that is thrown out the door. And and really, it's a shame. It should be a crime. All right, we're investigating the investigators as now we see Michael Flynn's lawyer met with the members of the special counsel. All appearances show that a deal is in the works, if not signed already. All right, as we continue, we're investigating the investigators. Investigators, the special counsel and Robert Mueller and his team involving Andrew Weissman. But this history of uh, is it, should it be a crime to offer deals? In other words, if the mandate is to investigate Trump-Russia collusion 
and they can't find it after a year's investigated, a year's worth of investigation. And then they find incidental issues that they think they can charge people with crimes with. And then they start negotiating. Tell us A, B, or C, and, and those crimes won't be prosecuted, or we'll cut you a great deal. We'll save you from going to prison. Uh, we'll save your son from going to prison. There's something, you know, the fact that you can bargain away this crime to get that crime right. on its face seems unethical, but this is the way it, the system works every day. It is, and as a defense attorney for several years, and I saw this unfolding with my clients and with other people, I always felt like it was it was fundamentally wrong. And in as it applies to the special counsel, Rod Rosenstein, as the deputy attorney general who appointed Mueller as a special counsel, wrote in his order of appointment such a broad uh, spectrum of, of potential crimes that it really violates the special counsel statute itself, which says it must specifically state the crimes for which you are investigating. But and nobody wants not. nobody wants to take these guys on because they don't want to piss them off, and they don't want to piss <laughs> them off because of the power right. and the the broad powers that they have to go out there and indict ham sandwiches, which in reality is truth. Right. You can indict a ham sandwich. Most people don't know the grand jury process. Explain it. Well, the grand jury is a charade because there's no defense attorney there. There's no rules of evidence. Hearsay, double hearsay, triple hearsay is all admissible. There's no judge presiding. Only the prosecutor is there, and he cherry picks the kinds of evidence that he wants to present to the grand jurors. And, and typically, when you're only getting one side of a story, you're simply going to adopt what the prosecutor is urging you to do. Uh, and, you know, it is anathema to justice. And it is one of the constructs of the Constitution that I think w was faulty. And, you know, we need to get away from the grand jury system, a better system, which many states have adopted. They've abandoned the grand jury system. They make prosecutors, after charges are brought by those prosecutors in their names, they must uh, submit that evidence to a judge in a preliminary hearing. And you've got, to you've got to convince that judge, based on probable cause, that you have enough evidence to go to trial. What about when we investigate the investigators, how could he, Mueller himself, have been the FBI director when in 2009 the FBI had an informant that discovered a network that was set up by Vladimir Putin where bribery and kickbacks and extortion and money laundering was happening and they knew all about it and covered it up. You know, the great irony here, and it's a disgusting irony, is that Robert Mueller and his successor, James Comey, together with Andrew Weissman and Rod Rosenstein, all, all of these people are buddies, and they all knew about the Russian racketeering scheme that drove the sale of a, a vital national security interest, uranium, to the Russians. And they didn't tell Congress. They had a duty to do it. We don't know if they told Cifius, but Cifius approved the deal unanimously with Hillary Clinton presiding. And and these guys are and now Holder, investigating Russia and Trump? It seems I mean, like do, they ought to be investigated. They absolutely should be. And, in fact, I hope that Congress, which is irate about this Uranium One deal, having now learned about it, puts Robert Mueller and Rosenstein and James Comey and Andrew Weissman uh, in front of uh, microphones and cameras under oath to answer for why they covered this up. Unbelievable. Real Russian collusion. What are they going to do about the dossier, too? But we've, we've got to let it go from here. Uh, we'll see you tonight on TV. We'll have a lot more on this. We have Lou Dobbs is going to stop by. And speaking of abuse of power, Sidney Powell, federal appellate attorney, former federal prosecutor, author of License to Lie, Exposing Corruption in the Department of Justice, is going to continue on this very topic. You don't want to miss it. That's uh, coming up next here on The Sean Hannity Show. Why the silence when there have been these allegations, serious ones, about President Clinton? Well, I'd like to say that I think that the women of America are speaking out about what they uh, think about this whole situation. And the women of America are just like other Americans in that they value fairness, they value privacy, and do not want to see... And a person with uncontrolled power, uncontrolled time, uncontrolled, uh, unlimited money uh, investigating the president of the United States.
Why do you think the reaction was different by women on Bill Clinton? And I say that because it does seem as if, frankly, when you watch some of the reactions by the president in defending Roy Moore, or at least overlooking the allegations against Roy Moore, that were you putting politics ahead of your personal disgust? No, but you, we're talking about a child molester. Uh, this okay, is, but, but, we're talking about a child molester. But President Clinton was accused of being a sexual predator. Well, uh, and of even rape at one point by one, by one by why, one. why don't we talk instead about how we go forward? Nobody is proud of President Clinton's behavior at the time. So define zero tolerance. You said there's now a zero tolerance. Yes. John Conyers, what does that mean for him right now? now? Let's say in or out. we are strengthened by due process. Mm -hmm. Just because someone is accused. You, and, and was it one accusation? Is it two? I think there has to be. John Conyers is an icon in our country. He has done a, gr a great deal to protect women, Violence Against Women Act, which the left wing, right wing is now quoting me as praising him for his work on that, and he did great work on that. But the fact is, uh, as John reviews his case, which he knows, which I don't, I believe he will Why do. Don't it. You? I believe that well, he will. That excuse me, may I finish my sure, sentence? Sure. That he will do the right thing. What, and is the right thing what? Resign? But he will do the right thing in terms of what he knows about his situation. That he's entitled to due process, but women are entitled to due process as well. All right, that first cut was Nancy Pelosi defending Bill Clinton uh, during an interview with Tim Russert. That goes back to February of 98 in the middle of the impeachment process. And then her saying about John Conyers, he's an icon entitled to due process. Uh, here to weigh in on this. And, of course, what is the Senate going to do with this tax reform bill, this tax cut bill, is Lou Dobbs, the host of Lou Dobbs Tonight on our sister network, the Fox Business Network, uh, author of the best-selling book, Putin's Gambit. Uh, how are you, sir? Well, how was your holiday? It was great, Sean. How about yours? You didn't see my Twitter frying my turkey and my butterball master bill turkey fryer? <laughs> you missed no, it. Are you kidding me? I was... I, I was I was bent over my own uh, uh, plate of uh, ex excessive uh, uh, fare. Okay, but that's not. But you didn't fry your turkey, so you're living in the dark ages. That's all I can say. And your turkey was dry, and the only way it was moist if you, if you drained it with gravy. You know, you got to remember, Sean. I'm basically, I'm a peasant. I, I was <laughs> raised in the country. I'm from Texas. And I and I just like things like mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, uh, dressing, uh, a lot of cranberry sauce, and and, yeah. and turkey in any state. So so you're basically like every other American uh, in the country that was gorging last Thursday and paying for it now. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> um, what do you make of what what? Well, let's just talk about the double standard on on these issues when they come up again and again. And start look, the defense of Bill Clinton, they defended the left, the indefensible because of his politics. And the same, you know, right. John Conyers has is entitled to due process. I actually agree with that statement. He is entitled to due process. Uh, but so is everybody else. And especially and when people say, no, they didn't do it. You know, I do believe in the presumption of innocence, and I'm being consistent in the fact is many on the left are not. You mean you mean you would like to see due process for Judge Roy Moore? I, I think. Oh my gosh, I, I believe the, in the, fundamental fairness. You know, by the way, in that case, can't we get somebody, a handwriting expert, to look at the yearbook? He said he didn't know the woman. Look at the yearbook. Determine the year of the ink. And determine when it was written and determine if it was his handwriting, because I had a handwriting expert of 42 years on this program, and he said he could ascertain that absolutely with 100 percent certainty. Where did, why is nobody talking about the forensics in that case that exist? Well, you're, you're exactly right, and as you've talked on your show uh, considerably. Uh, the fact is that uh, Gloria Allred, for some reason, doesn't want to produce the evidence she claimed uh, was absolutely certain uh, to convict uh, Judge Roy Moore, at least in the court of public opinion. I've got to hand it to the people of Alabama. They want to make this decision. It's their decision appropriately. And idiotic comments from Paul Ryan saying things like, well, I believe the, uh, the accusers are credible. Since when did a credible accusation be become the equivalent of guilty? I mean, this is nonsense coming from the establishment GOP on Capitol Hill. Well, let me, let's, 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 let's all we all agree on a fundamental point here. We don't want child molesters in any position of power. And then no, you, I think Ivanka Trump said it exactly right. 
there is a special place in hell. That's right. For someone who molests children. All right, let me let me move on to the economy because you know I actually am going to lay out tonight. It's going to take a while on TV. You know all the president's accomplishment, and we got three hundred big sure. ones. Okay. So my question is is really simple. Now that the president has done all that he can do in terms of getting the economy going, he's done everything he can do in terms of ending burdensome regulation. He's done everything he can do right. on oil and and moving towards energy independence. And he's keeping his judicial promises, thanks to Chuck Grassley last week in particular. So now the question is, and there are about 300 bills that the House has passed in the last year that the Senate hasn't taken up. And they've only approved about 50 percent in a year of the president's nominations. And I know that that Mitch McConnell says that our expectations are too high. What's going to happen in the Senate with this tax cut bill? Well, right now they're five votes short, as you know, and I don't see where they're getting the five votes, particularly when they're meeting today with the Senate. Fi- the president is meeting with the Senate Finance Committee, and at the same at the same time, Mitch McConnell doesn't show up at the White House with them. I worry about little minor symbols like that. I think that an engaged majority leader should be there with the committee, certainly in the White House, working side by side with the president. Because, you know, one I mean, this is a president now who's involved in constitutional confrontations as well as constitutional crises. Uh, He should be shoulder to shoulder with Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. And they are the ones who should be at the White House. Uh, not the president on Capitol Hill. So what does it mean at this point that they could actually end the year with no major accomplishment, having both houses of Congress? What it means, if I may say it this way, Sean, that Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell could do in 2017 what they've done every year in which they led the Republican Party in their respective houses, and that is to do absolutely nothing. It would mean they could do this year exactly what they've done throughout uh, their, uh, in the case of Paul Ryan, 20-year career, uh, and 35 years almost. Uh, well, you got you got to give the House it. some credit. I mean, they paid, they passed the Kate Steinle bill. They passed the Sanctuary City bill. It's not the health care bill that we were promised, but they still passed it. They passed the budget. I mean, they, they're passing the tax reform. Uh, and the Senate, I can, I can point to no accomplishments, none. Right. Uh, I do give them credit for knowing which way that legislation is going to move in the in, in the Senate. If if Speaker Ryan is moving legislation based on his his certainty that the Senate will do nothing, you know that's just that's just covered. Uh, and I don't credit either man. Uh, or, you, you haven't seen Paul Ryan out pushing anything. Uh, he he sits there in his office uh, and you know he, with that smug grin and waves his hand over. A conference that is so confused right now it's it's alarming for the republican party let's talk uh, about these men, five let's talk about these five senators so you got what ron johnson jeff flake who are the other three lisa murkowski susan collins john mccain yeah the the, the usual oh, and bob suspect. and bob corker there's six. Oh, yeah i don't include bob corker i i just refuse to even use his name he, he is such a banal all right, so 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 Flake, you know, is going to leave, and Corker is going to leave, and they don't care what happens to their colleagues that they leave behind. That are that this will likely set them up for a disastrous 2018. Yes, yes, I think that's exactly right. And this fiction that uh, somehow uh, they've been alienated by the president. These are people who have isolated themselves from the constituencies uh, of their respective states uh, that they were sworn to serve. Uh, they have decided they know better than their constituents. They don't have any, you know, they, the great unwashed, you know, the uh, American citizens of, uh, of Arizona and Tennessee. They, they simply don't count when you've got a high-minded public servant like Corker or Flake uh, in office. I, I mean, this is sickening to watch these, uh, these egomaniac, uh, narcissistic, utter mediocrities in, in public office. You know, I'm just watching at that point, what does the average Republican voter do and think now? Because, you know, you've got this ongoing battle, the establishment versus those of us that are conservative, those of us. You know, the the funny thing is I I told somebody that was interviewing me recently that the Republican Party left me. 
you know, I, I haven't changed my views on Fallon's budgets. I haven't changed my view on, on Reagan-era st- uh, style uh, supply-side conservative economics. You know, I like everything that the House bill does for corporations and repatriation and the middle class. Uh, and I certainly love the president lifting burdens and regulation, but it could be that much bigger if they followed Reagan's lead with an across-the-board tax cut. Reagan dropped the top marginal rates from 70 to 28 percent. It seems to me the fear among Republicans is is they don't want to be labeled as as people that cut taxes for the rich. And meanwhile, it's the economy that would boom afterwards if only they would, yeah. you know, only if they would follow these principles. But they, they're too afraid of their own shadow. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right, and I also believe that uh, there's great uh, there's great mis- mistaken uh, thinking going on in the Republican Party. If they think the American people in 2018, when they go to the polls, don't notice that the that the Republican elites gave a 40 percent tax cut to corporate America and gave the middle class, you know, maybe a couple of grand uh, per family. Uh, this is not going to be pretty to watch, Sean. Uh, either they get their head straight in that conference room if they get that far, and I'll give uh, you know I'll, I'll assume that they get it through the Senate. But if they if they I, I, I don't make that assumption. Work. Although Lisa Murkowski apparently is is now moving towards the yes column because of concessions they're making on drilling and Anwar and other right. other concessions. But all right, we'll take a break. We'll come back more with Lou Dobbs on the other side of this break. All right, as we continue, Lou Dobbs is with us. Lou, of course, the host of Lou Dobbs Tonight on the Fox Business Network. You know, is is Jeff Flake and Bob Corker going to let the rest of their party suffer, you know, massive losses because they so hate Trump over yeah, it, wanting to help the American people? Yeah, it's it's not their party, Sean. I really don't believe it is. I think that they pose. I think they were infiltrators. I, I think they're worse than rhinos. Uh, they pretended uh, as far as they could. Uh, to be as much as they could. But we learned this uh, over health care. Look, a yeah. hundred House Republicans, we now know for a fact, had no intention of repealing and replacing the 60 times they voted. The same in the Senate. You had seven senators that had no intention of repealing Obamacare because they all voted for it in 2015 when it wouldn't matter. And then when it did mm-hmm. matter, they reversed their vote. So what you've exactly. got, infiltrators, phonies, frauds, you know, call them whatever you want, but they're certainly making promises that they they had never any intention of fulfilling. Yeah. Pretty disappointing. Yeah, they're liars, they're liars, they're phonies, and they're frauds. And uh, you, with whatever other words you want to add to the, to the adjective string, but the American, the, the American people are going to witness a fight that's worth having. Uh, you and I, you know, we both know a little something about uh, street fighting, uh, uh, I don't know a thing about that. I've never been in a fight my whole life. Are you kidding? My whole life is a fight, <laughs> like yours. <laughs> exactly. Oh. But as we as we look at what's going to happen in 2018, this is a fight worth having. It means the Republican Party's got to find out who we are, stand up for it. This is a fight not only between globalists and nationalists, uh, not only a fight between the elites and the establishment and the American people. This is a fight for the soul of the country, because with if the Republican Party uh, <laughs> dissolves uh, in, in 2018, there isn't a chance in the world that we can save this country, let alone make America great again. Scary proposition, but also very true. Very accurate. All right, this is a big moment, big week, big three weeks. Lou Dobbs, thanks for being yep. with us. We always love having you on at 800-941-SEAN. You want to be a part of the program. We're going to investigate how corrupt the justice system in this country can be and is. Sidney Powell, an amazing book coming up next. Now, I recently read a, powerful, I read a powerful book, read it in one day. It's titled License to Lie, Uncovering Corruption in the Department of Justice. Now, I recommend that you read this book. Because if you if if you if even half of it is true, and I believe it is true, you have a lot of work to do to, to clean up that that apartment department. Will you consider doing that for me? Thank you, sir. I will. 
she writes that overzealous, ambitious, narcissistic, and dishonest prosecutors destroy innocent people by deliberately withholding evidence, evidence they knew contradicted their cases. A small, powerful group, Washington overlords, federal prosecutors, sometimes break rules to win cases. All right, that book that Orrin Hatch was referring to is called License to Lie, Exposing Corruption in the Department of Justice. Sidney Powell, the author of this book, federal appellate attorney, former federal prosecutor, and with a decade inside of the Department of Justice, well, Powell knows all that we were talking about earlier today with Greg Jarrett, and that is the fraudulent conduct, the backroom dealings that are destroying the nation's legal system. And Powell has written for several outlets. One article recently is judging by Mueller's staffing choices. He may not be interested in justice, something we've been telling you. James Comey and Loretta Lynch should be impeached for whitewashing Clinton's crimes. Well, that was written uh, back in October. And that also makes a good point. But anyway, Sidney Powell talks about many of the tactics that are used by a corrupt system from the IRS scandal to the Mueller task force and a recent hire by Mueller, an attorney by the name of Weissman. He's the guy that we were talking about as a sordid past and tens of thousands of people lost their jobs at Arthur Anderson and the whole Enron debacle. And Merrill Lynch uh, was dragged into this. And the Supreme Court, this, this guy Weissman has been overturned numerous times, 9-0 by the Supreme Supreme Court and by an appellate court uh, in an equally important case. And as for the prosecutor, you would uh, want, if you were innocent, well, four former Merrill Lynch executives begged to differ because Weissman ran the grand jury interrogating many of the witnesses and at least one of the defendants. He sat in the courtroom with his arm around the Houston Chronicle reporter and oversaw every aspect of the prosecution and the prosecutors obtained convi convictions against the Merrill Lynch employees and um you know, what it turns out that they steadfastly maintain their innocence, handled the paperwork for a transaction which had been taken through the steps of Merrill Lynch's own in-house counsel. And Weissman's team vehemently argued against allowing the defendants bail pending their appeals. Well, of course, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals completely exonerated all of these men. How often does this happen? Sidney Powell joins us now. How are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? You know, it's a, it's an interesting path that I have taken to your book um, because I've discovered a lot of this on my own, and it's been something that's been percolating in my mind for many, many years. And, you know, I can go back to Patrick Patrick Fitzgerald, and he knew on day one that Richard Armitage was a leaker in the Valerie Plame case, and then it goes all the way down three years later, and Scooter Libby, you know, I think it was a, a perjury charge, and they went after him with a vengeance. That's all they got in that particular case. And in my mind, that was a perjury trap set by an overzealous prosecutor. Am I wrong? No, I think you're exactly right. This has been going on for at least 15, 16, 17 years. Well, I mean, this is the this is what's happening. Now I'm looking at Paul Manafort has an indictment he's facing. It has nothing to do with the original mandate, which was Trump-Russia collusion at all. And I assume that Mueller and Weissman and others are trying now to squeeze him to give up something. Well, we'll get you out of jail free, give you a get out of jail free card if you say what we want you to say. And I assume the same is happening with General Flynn as we speak. Oh, I have no doubt that it is. That's one of Weissman's standard operating procedures. He will exert every measure of pressure he can find from any source, whether it involves threatening to indict members of the family or whatever it takes to put the maximum pressure on anybody he wants to sing his song. And he, he writes the script. He doesn't uh, worry about what the truth is. Why would Mueller choose a guy with a sordid past like Weissman? He apparently likes those tactics. I'm sure Weissman is good at taking Mueller's orders. They've been a pair for a very long time. In fact, Mueller had a hand in picking Weissman for the Enron Task Force 16, 17 years ago now. And uh, he also goes far back with Leslie Caldwell, who used to be head of the Department of Justice Criminal Division, who then brought Weissman back into DOJ recently. I mean, the, all of the Enron Task Force prosecutors found their way to very powerful positions, mainly in the Obama administration. And they've been running the country from various parts of it for a number of years now. Do you think any of what the tactics that they've shown, in other words, after Mueller knew what happened with Arthur Anderson and Enron and what happened to these Merrill Lynch guys, don't you don't they have any responsibility to own up to the fact that they are ruining people's lives here in the process of exerting this unchecked power? 
No. I mean, one of the things we need to do, we need massive criminal justice reform to stop this unchecked power. Prosecutors have sovereign immunity. They enjoy the same immunity that federal judges enjoy. Even when a prosecutor commits intentional misconduct, such as hiding evidence that they know exonerates the defendant. And that happened in the case of Ted Stevens, didn't it? That happened in the Ted Stevens case. It happened in the case of the Merrill Lynch executives that Mr. Weissman was responsible for. These prosecutors literally yellow highlighted evidence they knew and had identified long before the trial as favorable to the defendants and then hit it for six years. How can the, the, is it, why isn't that a crime? If exculpatory it evidence exists and, and they purposely withhold it, they're not interested in justice. Then what are they interested in? Their, their resumes? Are they interested in the power? What is it? It's a power trip. They're, they're notching their belts with convictions of high-profile people. But it, it happens at all levels of our system. And it's, it's even worse, I think, in our state systems than it is in our federal system. We desperately need criminal justice reform that puts and imposes on prosecutors some measure of accountability, especially for their intentional misconduct. And it needs to happen sooner rather than later. Word got back to me that Mueller is upset that I keep asking these questions, apparently. Does that sound surprising? <laughs> There he is. Well, I'm not going to stop because I actually believe in the Constitution, Sydney. Yes, and, and the I'm Const- not going to stop either. So my question to you is, knowing them, knowing their tactics, knowing what they've done in the past and how they've failed, where, how do you see what's going on now playing out? Well, there's nothing that we can trust coming out of the Mueller investigation. The indictments are going to be flawed. The, the prosecution is going to be corrupted from the get-go. I said that as soon as he named Weissman to his squad. Mm-hmm. And he knows exactly what Weissman's capable of. That's why I put him on there. Okay, so then the bottom line is they're not interested in Manafort, really. I mean, if they if that's the best they can do, they're going to go after him. If they're not really interested in General Flynn, although I suspect they're probably leveraging General Flynn's son as as a means of getting him to say something that would be damning to President Trump. Isn't their real goal here, President Trump? Oh, I'm sure it is. They want to go as high as they can possibly go and make it as miserable for the president and all of his family as they possibly can. So what do you see? How does this plan out after, you know, I would assume by now Flynn probably signed a proffer agreement, no? Uh, he he might have. Um, he, he might be holding fast. He might be negotiating. Um, anything is possible there. But, yes, with pressure on his son, it's going to be extremely difficult for him. And then so the choice will be give us something on the president, even if you have to make it up, or your son goes to jail. Yes. Isn't and there something unethical about that? We, well, there should be. It certainly should be. And they'll say, we want you to say this, this, or this, and this, or you're going to be indicted. Well, what about the cases that I referred to earlier in the case of Anderson Accounting, Enron, or Merrill Lynch? And in those particular cases, you know, if they spend a year in jail, what do they just do? Say, oh, never mind, it got overturned by the Fifth Circuit or it got overturned by the Supreme Court, 9-0? Yep, that's exactly what happened. 85,000 people lost their jobs for absolutely nothing because the Supreme Court reversed the Arthur Anderson conviction, 9 to nothing. Mr. Weissman and his team had made up a crime, and they did the same thing. They made up a crime against the Merrill defendants. The Fifth Circuit said that what they didn't been indicted for was not criminal. How is this guy not indicted? I mean, the only two prominent people in in the public eye, well, three if we, we Greg Jarrett is certainly up there. Alan Dershowitz, of all people, not somebody I, I agree with a lot politically, but he has been screaming from the mountaintops about how corrupt this is, as you have been. Yes. Well, we filed a grievance against Andrew Weissman with the New York Bar Association. At the time, he was Mr. Mueller's deputy director of the FBI. Mueller had brought him under his wing at the FBI again after his work on the Enron Task Force. So the Department of Justice was actually defending Weissman on the ethical grievance that could have and should have cost him his law license. Well, in the middle of the night, the New York Bar Association, after holding the grievance for several months, sent it to the Department of Justice Office of Professional Responsibility to decide it, even though the Department of Justice was defending Weissman on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm sitting here flabbergasted, and I believe in justice, and I believe if, if, you know, but I also see that there's a pretty strong case with the Hillary Clinton. They lied about it for a year, but now we know that they bought and paid for Russian lies through Fusion GPS and the dossier and Christopher Steele, and they spent all this money uh, literally 
paying for false Russian propaganda and disinformation influence an election. If the mandate is for, for Trump-Russia collusion, why wouldn't that apply to Hillary Clinton and her campaign when she bought and paid for lies in the campaign? It certainly should, but obviously it hasn't been so far. What do you make of Jeff Sessions? Because I can't figure him out. I always liked him. Thought he was a great senator. He seems paralyzed and impotent at this point, doing nothing. I've always thought highly of him, too. I think he's a good man, and he's certainly done some very good things with the M13 gang. And uh, But there's a but coming. Yeah, there's a but coming. I just think it's extremely difficult to have an attorney general who has to be rec- recused from handling the most the biggest crisis facing the country's legal system in a long, long time. You see, what I fear here is is that I think if you push people far enough, and these, and I don't know, I just got to assume that General Flynn is somebody that can handle pressure. Paul Manafort can handle pressure. But when you're talking about the rest of your life being blown up, I'm not sure even if high people that can handle high a higher degree of pressure, if they don't break under the circumstances knowing that the rest of their life is over. You're absolutely right. Judge Rakoff wrote an article a number of years ago about why the innocent plead guilty. I would say that 5% of our prison population is completely innocent, and some are there on guilty pleas. It happened in the Enron cases. By the time the government had lost a second trial and were going to try people a third time after a reversal or a hung jury, people cratered. They couldn't take the emotional pressure, the financial pressure, the psychological pressure. They they just cratered and went ahead and pled guilty. I, I can think of two or three people that I know for sure did that. In other words, they know they're innocent, but it's, uh, I'll I'll take the plea, I'll pay the fine, I'll spend the year in jail and get my life back. Right, because they've already lost 10 years of it or more through the ordeal. And a fortune in the process trying to defend themselves. Right. They're bankrupted, they're they're broken, their families have been devastated. You can't imagine what happens to to children and teenagers when they wake up one morning and their parents have been indicted. Or like Manafort, your home is raided. And your wife is frisked in the in, in the bed. I mean, what a what a horrible violation and absolutely unnecessary. I, I knew as soon as I heard that it happened that, that was Andrew Wiseman. We got to take a break. We'll come back with Sidney Powell, who wrote the book *License to Lie: Exposing Corruption in the Department of Justice*. And we'll get to your calls at the bottom of this half hour here on the Sean Hannity Show. All right, as we continue with Sidney Powell and her book *License to Lie: Exposing Corruption in the Department of Justice*. You know, one of the things that I think is most frightening in all of this is there all these discussions and talks about, you know, for example, the Fusion GPS uh, phony Russian document may have been used to get a FISA warrant to spy on everybody in the Trump campaign. Exactly. Now, if that ever happened, that would be that would not be legal evidence or legally obtained evidence, would it? No, we need to know exactly what role the Steele dossier played in getting that warrant. You know, I, I just see so many crimes here, and then the Uranium One deal, and then the dossier deal, and then Debbie Wasserman Schultz and her, her IT guy, and, you know, and like Hillary Clinton, who, who deletes subpoenaed emails by Congress? Who bleach bits them and, and acid washes them and destroys Blackberries and only hands over devices without SIM cards and gets away with it? Right. Well, I wouldn't get away with it, would I? No, you would not. You'd be under the jail. I'd be under the jail, meaning dead and buried under the jail. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, you know, or or the fact that so many people are being literally being surveilled, we're told. And, all, you know, for example, look at the look at these two specific leaks. A president is talking to a prime minister and a president of another country. And both the transcripts are leaked. Well, isn't that a crime? Isn't that illegal surveillance and leaking? It certainly should be illegal to leak information like that. Mr. Comey's own leaks should be illegal. They were certainly a violation of executive privilege. And that alone just flabbergasted me when I heard that. Do you think they're going to be successful, the deep state, you know, Democrats, these prosecutors, and and taking out a duly elected president? through unconstitutional tactics? I think they're going to make a very strong run at it, but no, I do not think that ultimately they will be successful because I think the American people are seeing more and more every day how absolutely outrageous this whole system is. 
It's unbelievable. All right, well, I actually am out of time. I'm going to have to let you go. Sidney Powell, a license to lie, exposing corruption in the Department of Justice. Unbelievable. When we come back, we'll hit the phones. 800 941 Sean is our number. All right, 25 till the top of the hour. Let's get to our busy phones. Uh, 800 941 Sean is. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait what now? Why are you, you want to just get right to the busy phone? Right to the busy phone. You what? don't want to talk about your activities on the holiday. What activity in particular? Well, there were talking? several videos of you on Thanksgiving Day. You mean. Well, several. I, by the way, they went viral. Do you know that? Uh, yeah. Because everyone was tweeting me like, oh, my God, did you see Sean? He's actually making a turkey. Yeah, by the way, why does this is like everybody in my family. They forget that I had a formal life. And, you know, if I do anything like paint a room, I remember painting my daughter's room and my daughter wanted to change colors. So I paint the room and she was supposed to help. She lasted all of about five minutes. And I just said, all right, go ahead. Go do your thing. Get out, get out, out. And I don't leave a room until it's done. I just don't leave. You were hysterical. You're like looking at the camera. You're no, like, I'm, okay, I'm, now I'm going to do this. No, because I go back into my contracting mode, which is get it done, get it done, get it done. I don't have time. Time is money. A handle thing scared me when you were like putting it in the hot oil and you were like trying to take that handle off. I was like, ah, I was like so nervous. No, no, no. The butter ball turkey fryer by Master built is the best thing i've ever had and i cooked a 14 and a half pound turkey and i did it in 53 minutes and i put the whole video online and i go for more turkey tips go to hannity.com which was a total joke because there were no turkey tips on hannity.com and it was the best the juiciest i think i did my best job because you actually prepare the turkey and inject it and you can use different flavorings for the injection and what it does is it really makes it more it is so moist it melts like butter say it in new york tone butter like butter like butter like butter um so how was your thanksgiving oh first it time was, with sunshine it right? was lovely and how was uh now did you do all the cooking i did the majority of the cooking yes okay and did anybody help Everyone lended a hand. Everyone was so helpful. And, and I noticed Sunshine isn't here. Did she imbibe? Clearly, the tryptophan has not yet worn off. The who? Tryptophan. It's the additive in turkeys that oh, makes yeah, you yeah, sleepy. Yeah. Oh, so she's, is that true? I don't know anything about Yeah, that's why people always say, like, you Listen, go for round two, like, you eat at three o'clock or four o'clock, and by seven, after you've had your nap, you know, yada, yada. Okay. Well, I just, for the record, I stayed on my diet this whole weekend. What did you and eat? And I lost you didn't, weight. You, you, did, what, you didn't have any mashed potatoes? None. No sweet potatoes? Nope. No green bean casserole? Nope. Oh, God. Thanksgiving at your house stinks. No, it was all there for everyone else. I so, just I just said, I'm not going to do what I do every year. And Did you eat my your fried face. turkey? Uh, yeah, I had two pieces of turkey. I had two pieces of ham, and I consumed a couple of alcoholic beverages. All righty then. That's it. That's it. That's what I have. No to... vegetables. No, I hate vegetables. Why would I waste my calories on a vegetable? No, if I'm gonna have it, they were nice. It's not big... calories; it's nutrients. Oh, okay, but oh uh, but I had but I had big pieces of turkey, and so there's pictures of me cooking, frying the turkey, and there's uh, when I when the turkey was done, I pulled it out and I did that video. And then I was carving the turkey. And it's just like what I said, painting my room. Nobody thinks that I do anything or I ever did anything else in my life. And I'm like, I cook more meals in my house than anybody else. I'm the one that cooks. As a matter of fact, my son was home from college and he and his, he had brought a couple of friends with him. And yesterday I created a feast breakfast for them. Of course, I didn't eat it. Bacon. Isn't that hard, though? Yeah. I mean, I picked a little <laughs> bit. Uh, bacon, but I get the thick bacon, the really thick bacon. The real stuff. The real stuff. And then I got, uh, I think it's Oscar Mayer, but it's thick slices. All right. And then I got, um, we had some of the ham left over from the turkey. And then we, uh, not from the from Thanksgiving, not we the turkey. We knew what you meant. Okay. Then I uh, made them French toast, and they loved. time did you get up? 4.30? No, it took me 10 minutes. To, it took you 10 minutes uh, on, to make a 19-course make... breakfast. Yeah, it took no time at all. Just, you know, a couple of English muffins. When you and retire, you can cook for Linda. Why would Clearly, I... I'm going to hire you. Who cleans? You're going to clean and cook. I'm going to put no, you to work. No, you, I, like, I, you like hard work. I actually you can don't talk mind. to her all day long, then. Well, if you have certain relatives that I don't want to <laughs> talk to, then if I have certain relatives I don't want to talk to, I'm busy right now. I'm cooking. Yeah, I'm busy. I can't talk right now. I need to focus on my recipe. I need to focus on my recipes. Jason exactly. and Ethan also hosted and cooked their own. Over, Jason, you cooked? I just did the stuffing. My brother, my oldest brother, he's the he's the real cook. He did the he did the bird. I just did the stuffing. And he did it the old fashioned way, and it was dry. And the only way to eat dry turkey is to drain it with gravy. Dear Cole, my brother's turkey dry. It was quite moist. Okay, it wasn't. If you did it the traditional way, and everyone thinks they're basting their turkey, you're not basting your turkey because the juices can't penetrate the skin of the turkey. 
There was no gagging because it's, it's like water off a food. duck's back. Delicious and moist. So don't even, don't be insulting my bird. Okay? All right. Yo, well, if you did it my way, and all of you knew, so you have no excuse about the butterball turkey fryer, you would have had a better Thanksgiving, and it would have been cooked in fifty three minutes. Actually, I will say, Lauren and Don actually did a little fryer. They brought over a little breast, and I had my master built fryer, and we and had what that tasted a better. Later. My turkey, obviously. No, because you can't you base you can't base turkey. your turkey in the oven because it won't penetrate the skin. Yeah, but I did something a little different. And what's so. that? Well, what I do is I separate the skin from the body, and then the I skin massage, from the body. I massage, and you massage the tur- the dead turkey. I do. I do. I, I I send it up to God. It's like a turkey it's spa it. day. Exactly. I think oh, we should my. post a video of that next yeah, year. Yeah. It's, but I'll tell you the, not, the other good video. The other thing that I did, I spent hours. Uh, life below zero. And thinking, that's what I want to do with my next life. I want to move to Alaska and live like a, a pioneer, you know, where you have to do everything yourself, everything. And you got to worry about grizzly bears, and you got to worry about bear attacks. So no cell phone. Uh, that's, I, 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 yeah, I suddenly love that. that doesn't sound so good. I don't no, know. No, they have Internet connection up there. They have satellite connections, sure. So you're going to sit in the woods alone with the bears and then take your phone out and go and on go- Twitter. You know, I've never been a hunter. I haven't shot a deer, but they were shooting deer and moose and bears and they're getting seals. And uh, it's not something I want to do, that part. But there's a grocery store, according to one place, 500 miles away. I just have it shipped in. You're going to continue to hire your assassin. Hire the assassin, keep it, exactly. Keep it local. <laughs> hire the turkey assassin. I don't want to take those those feathers off. Uh, Wayne in Baltimore, Maryland. What's Is it my buddy, Wayne? Wayne Dupree, up, is that you? How you doing? By the way, Wayne has a podcast. How's your podcast doing? I'm missing you, man. I'm, 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 I'm I've, ne- I've never said. I've never said. Well, you wait for me to call in. That's not an invitation. You, I, I, every <laughs> time you've asked me, I've done it. <laughs> I am formally inviting my big brother to join me on my podcast in the near future in 2018. How's that? Okay, when you when you do a proper. In, invite i'll be there <laughs> okay so what's going on how was let your me, thanksgiving let me tell you something your video your video of the master built turkey yeah now last year you know i loved it this year you did a little bit more because you put a little bit more on line but what i came up with i saw your ending and my and you know the juices in my mouth were flowing because you look so happy your eyes were glowing you look like you won a million dollars and you took that turkey out of there you, uh told us how many minutes it was and how many pounds it was. So I'm basing my turkey off of you. Right. I did. I did. I did. All right. And so you, and you used the you, you used the butterball deep fryer. I used the butterball deep fryer. Right. And? And now, last year I got it. It was great. This year I got it. Uh, it was great, but I messed up just a slight bit. How do you mess up? Sean, you drop it down and you pick it up. What's so well, hard? Well, I cleaned it out, right? I, I cleaned wow. it out, and um, I have the peanut oil that was sitting around it right and i'm getting ready to get everything out you know i already marinated i got the butter creole and right. I marinated put it on the end that's what i put in the butter creole that's what i use yeah boy not like butter baby so, bet. so um what i did was instead of putting the peanut oil in the master belt fryer i turned the heat on for i didn't show oh, no. why i did it like that what did you do you burned your, you burned it out well you know what jesus was there because i quickly Put my oil in before, yeah, and it probably <laughs> splattered right up in your face. No, 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 it didn't. It didn't because you know because God was there, my friend. But no, I mean, but everything was fine. Everything turned out, and my girl they loved it. I have okay, a well, I have a know, simple bit of advice for you newbie turkey fryers: follow directions. <laughs> That's my advice. It's not that hard. All right, no, well, it's not. It's not. All right, Wayne, listen, happy. I'm grateful. I'm thankful for this audience. I'm thankful for all my deplorable friends like you. Uh, we're in a, a fight for the heart and soul of the country. It's nice to get a little time to reflect and, and just relax. Um, all right, my friend, we'll talk soon. I'll come on your podcast anytime you ask. You know how to get me. Uh, 800 941 All right, uh, let us say hi to Patty is in Vegas on K Dawn Radio. What's going on, Patty? How are you? Great. How are you today? I'm good. What's happening? Um, just a little frustrated with Pelosi lately. Well, I have been historically, but the way that she is defending Kanye and not even and wants to hang Roy Moore out in front of the Capitol building, the double standard is is mind blowing on the Democratic side when it comes to any one of these sex scandals. It's 
it's crazy to me. You know, it was funny because this weekend she took so much fire for saying she believes in due process. Now, she didn't believe in due process for any Republican. For, you know, yeah. And that's what I pointed out. She'll defend Bill Clinton to the, the nth degree in 98 and and condemn any Republican whose name comes up. But, boy, you know, now we're talking about due process again. And all I do is consistently say is that you don't rush to judgment. Wait for the facts to come in. Unless somebody like Al Franken, you have irrefutable evidence like the picture, then you don't have to worry about the evidence because it's there but you have the evidence you have a you have a president that was impeached exactly well no everybody knows he's a predator now i mean you know, look the only reason democrats are speaking out now about bill clinton being the predator is because he doesn't have any power now and they don't need the clintons and hillary's finished politically so now all of a sudden they're showing great moral courage which they're not right well but she's still she's still to this day will say that it, it wasn't his fault <laughs> It was or it was it was 30 years ago. It was 40 years ago. Why are we talking about it? Well, why are we talking about it when you have you've been impe- he's been impeached? We have irrefutable evidence. You have it against Al Franken. You have them having a slush fund to pay people um, damages, which the, the amount they paid them was ridiculously low. Right. And and now all of a sudden uh, he is an icon, an icon. Are, are we even having this conversation? Look, I mean, the bottom line is, and not when I said it, some people got angry with me. And I said, no, I am consistent. And he said it didn't happen. I said, OK, you know, let's let the fa- like, for example, in the Roy Moore case, you know, he said he didn't know the woman that he signed the yearbook to allegedly. And we had a handwriting expert on that said with 100 percent certainty If they compare his writing to the writing at the time, they will be able to tell within 100% certainty whether it was him or not. And the same thing on the ink side of it. Is the ink old or is the ink fairly new? And they'd be able to tell that. And and why we don't use the forensics in that case. I mean, I know that I I don't even know what Gloria Allred's answer to that is at this particular point in time. But, you know, if she wants, if she really believes in that that was Roy Moore, then, you know, subject it to a real forensic place and show everybody the results. And that point, well, then Roy Moore has some explaining to do because he said he never knew the woman. Doesn't that sound fair to you? But then they're, they're not going to do it. It's bizarre. Well, and if you and if it were everybody, every news outlet, everybody would be asking for that book. Everybody would be asking for that book if it was a Republican. I mean, if it was a a a Democrat, they would not want to go back and revisit this 40 years ago. But that it's a Republican, they want to go ahead and crucify him, but yet they don't want the evidence to... It, why isn't everybody asking for it? Where's NBC? Where's ABC? Where's MSNBC? Where's everybody saying, give me this so that we can get evidence and move on? Because they don't want to move on. They want to keep it going. They want to defame any Republican they can. And they will. And it's never going to stop. This is not going to stop. No. And it will be Republicans and it will be Democrats. They're, they're you know, equal opportunity, you know, uh, bad people on all sides. And I think that these guys that owe, that use taxpayer dollars, let them use money out of their own pocket to pay their claims. Let them pay for it. Why should the taxpayers foot the bill? Uh, and then they'll argue, well, it's, you know, I was innocent. I just paid it to avoid any type of, okay, well, may, well, maybe they did, but not, don't pay, use our money. That's your choice. Use it. You want anonymity. You want it to go away. Pay with your money. And it's ridiculous. I don't see why one taxpayer dollar is spent on settling claims, but that they want settled. It doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, have a, have a, this is going to be a hell of a three week news period here leading up to the Christmas vacation or four weeks. Anyway, where do you see tonight's open on Hannity? You, and we'll investigate the investigators tonight. And we got a lot of other stuff. By the way, the NFL viewership is in the tank. Do you even care anymore about the NFL this year, Jason? One of the biggest NFL fans I know. Well, my team is a uh, lovely 2-8. and eight, so, no. you know. Oh, you're a Giant fan? Yeah, I'm a Giant fan. Love and life. I think at this point they want the best draft choice coming up. No, they'll still play Eli Manning for no reason. Well, they shouldn't, actually, because he's got no team behind him. They lost every one of their receivers. They have no front line anymore. They have nothing. All right, Hannity tonight, 9 Eastern, Fox News Channel. All right, so there's three and a half weeks for McConnell and the Senate to get their job done. We'll list what the president's done on his own. We'll list what the House has done. And we'll talk about how little the Senate has done. And we'll get reaction with Newt Gingrich, Sebastian Gorka. Also, we'll investigate the investigators, Andrew Weissman and Robert Mueller tonight. Sidney Powell, Greg Jarrett, their ethics are questionable. 
and Franken's press conference, 9 Eastern Hannity, tonight on Fox.